That is flat out sabotage. And I still can't believe Bill Belichick got away with this publicly. There's never a wrong time to do the right thing. Football can wait. Tim Tebow's a fraud. The Here Mets are a fraud. Yeah. Major League Baseball's yeah. a fraud. <laughs> expectations for the first time he will feel in the National Football yes. League because he got to do it on a honeymoon. He got to do it as Brady's stand-in for those two games, the first two games of 2016. And they went to Arizona, and that was considered a big upset at the time. Yes. They played very well, and they won 23-21. to Then they went home, and it was not an upset because they were heavily favored to beat Miami, and they beat him 31-24. to There's a lot of hype. He came in, and, and like as you mentioned, when he came in for the 49ers, Skip, there were no expectations. Mm-hmm. Nobody thought they were going to do anything. Nope. So, and even they went, they, what they win, they went seven and they won his last five uh, starts mm-hmm. with him. They still weren't close to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So, there, like you mentioned, there's no expectation, there's no pressure. Now, everybody is expecting mm-hmm. you to be that guy. Everybody's expecting you to lead this team to the playoffs or into, into playoff contention, whether or not you win the division, but they expect you to be 10 and 6, 11 mm-hmm. and 5. So now, with all that pressure heaped on you, Mm -hmm. can you perform? I don't think there's anything unfair about the expectations. It's just like we talked about with Kirk Cousins. When you get paid that kind of money, when they make that type of commitment to you, there's a lot expected of you. And and he did have the success that he had or, or late last season. He, he earned that contract. Or you could say he earned that contract. It, it's a little premature. So now he's got to go and perform at a level based off of, of what they've given him. Forget about Jimmy G, what he thought about Tom Brady. What about Tom Brady, what he thought when he entered the league? The first day he met, met, um, met Bob Kraft, he told him, this is going to be the best decision you ever made since you bought the team. This is guy's a multi-millionaire, and, and you got some some skinny kid with with nobody. 199th pick. And what, yeah. He, he got beat out at Michigan. You don't get from Eastern Illinois to a potential first-round draft pick if you don't have that mentality. You certainly don't get from right. a backup quarterback to one of the richest contracts in football history if you don't have that mentality. It's something that, and you, you know, give me a hard time about this sometimes, I don't think it's just mentality athletes have to have. I think if you want to be great in anything, you have to convince yourself you already are. The world just doesn't know it yet. Tom's entire career has been based on the chip on his shoulder. Seeking Bledsoe's job and Belichick's approval. Chasing the GOAT. Threatened by Peyton Manning. Peyton retired. When you build a career, not on your athletic ability, your arm, your mobility, your brain power, but when you build it on seeking, chasing, and threatening, and they're all gone. And all I see is horsey rides this summer. Has Brady lost a little bit of what defined him? It seems to me he knows himself so well now that he sees he start to lose a little traction in his life, Skip. And he says, before I fall completely off, yep. let me pause for a second, get where I need to be in a good, stable place, and then I'll rejoin this team. Good for him to know where he is in life and where he isn't and where he needs to be. This was the classic case of when the demons rise up, instead of medicating yourself with alcohol or drugs, you say, I I just need more counseling. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what he's doing exactly off the field to deal with this, to sort of treat it, but I'm, I'm happy for him, mm-hmm. and I'm proud of him for doing that. I agree with you. But now I have to take it back into the football context, and I'll come off as callous and cold-blooded. But once again, it shows you that as a football team, you can never count on him because he just has issues that are always going to rear their ugly heads at the worst times. I understand that football, he is a football player, uh, and, and football, and we always want football to take priority and take precedence in someone's life. But he has a bigger issue. And I'm not so sure that Skip, if he were to to fall off the wagon this time, if he's going to be able to get back because now that's going to be another year. At some point in time, Skip, missing 10 games, missing a year, missing another year, at some point that catches up with you. Yep. He's not going to always be 27, 28. We think that just because you stop using the drugs that you're going to be 
healthy and you're going to be your state of mind and you're going to be clear and buoyant. No, you're not. You go through different stages in recovery. And obviously, Josh is going through a stage where it's not necessarily about the substance being in my life. It's about how you think, how you talk, the things you say, and being prompt. Being, being at your meetings, being where you're supposed to be, because those are things that alcoholics and drug addicts, they don't do very well. Credit to Tebow. I mean, 270 in double A is your secondary sport you pick up later in life sports-wise. I mean, I, I credit the guy. He's, he's, he's rich and he's still grinding away in minor league baseball. They like having him around because even at 30, he's a great example to their farm system. They don't have a great farm system, but he's a great example of how hard they want a professional to work. So they enjoy having Tebow around. They really think him to be authentic, and he's been a great influence on the younger players. I could overlook these strikeouts. If he had 15, 20 home runs mm -hmm. with 103 strikeouts, Jenny, you know, I was like, oh, Tebow got power. Mm -hmm. Get hit for power. How you got six home runs? You talking about you a power hitter? But I'm just trying to figure out why we talk about a guy that got 103 strikeouts. Mm -hmm. 103. Do you know how many times you got to whiff to get that many strikeouts? And you up here talking about, oh, he, it's about a positive. That general man. But you know what, Scale? I'm not surprised. Look at the Mets. He was on the verge of getting called up to the Mets. Why? In part because he's Tim Tebow, because he's got it factor. He's got rub off factor on the rest of the team. He inspires everyone around him. So his intangibles obviously play in this as well as his tangibles, okay. his ability to hit a baseball. He could have fallen on his face in low A and been such an embarrassment that the Mets would have to they send him home. Hit. Tim Tebow's a fraud. Yep, the Mets are a fraud. Yep. Major League Baseball's yeah. a fraud. <laughs> Tim Tebow is auth as authentic as Millie Vanilli. Mm. Anybody Ooh. else? Anybody else in the minor leagues with these numbers, unless you were a defensive whiz at shortstop or some catcher, people would would, would laugh at these numbers. They're, they're not major league worthy for a guy who hadn't played baseball for 10 years.